In this video, we'll walk through the process for the 3.11 submitted reporting package reconciliation. This will uh, provide information for both the monthly reconciliation the agencies should be doing uh, for their internal purposes, as well as the mid-year and year-end reconciliations. Uh, it's all the same process, so we'll kind of walk through that in uh, various steps uh, so that you can click through if you have any questions for the different parts. So this first section, we'll be discussing what to do when you um, get your reporting package for the first time. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter an agency code here on the Lease Roll Forward tab in cell B1, and that will populate your agency code throughout the signature page, checklist, all the other tabs. So like I said, Lease Roll Forward tab B1 is your agency code. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to go to the payment schedule tab. And so what we're assuming at this point is you have created your first Sabita. Um, this will also apply for your leases. Um, you just use the 3.09 lease reporting package. You've used the GASB lease calculator. You've entered the necessary information. You've created your amortization table. So what you'll do is you'll take that amortization table and you're going to copy and paste it into this payment schedule tab and fill out the necessary information. So we will pull up the lease calculator. We will see that we have the amortization table created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the date, principal, and interest on the amortization table. Copy those. I'm going to paste them down in the payment schedule tab on the reporting package into column L, M, and N. So I will paste those down, and you'll see it'll add the totals. So now what I want to do is I want to add in column K the fiscal year, the state fiscal year, that the payment will be made. So in our example, this submit is starting on the first payment is 731 2023 That'll be a 2024 fiscal year payment. I will make those payments... 12 payments in fiscal year 24, and then payments in fiscal year 25, I'll make another 12, and then this last payment will be in fiscal year 26. So that is what I'm filling out here. I will then complete the information for, I posted down the amortization schedule. You can see it's got multiple lines. I want to fill out columns D, E, and F for all of those lines that have activity for this Sabita. Um, if you had another one, you would paste down the amortization schedule for the second one, skipping a row, and you'd fill out all the information for that one in the same columns. So what I'll do is call this software ID 123, just as an example. Vendor name, you'd enter the actual vendor. And at least type. Um, here you will choose Sabita if you're doing the Sabita reporting package. If you're doing the lease reporting package, um, 3.09, you would choose the one that applies to the underlying asset, so if it's a lease building, land, etc. Um, for the 3.11 package, you would always choose Sabitas. So I'm going to take that information and I'm going to copy it down, like I said, for all of the rows that have information for the amortization schedule. So I'm going to paste that down. You'll see it'll populate some other columns as well if the formulas are running. So now what I want to do is I want to complete columns S, T, and U. And I only want to complete it for the first row for this specific lease. So the lease start date is going to be, in my example, it's 7-1-2023. Lease end date is going to be 7-31-2025. And in this column, column U, you'll choose the asset number. That is the asset that you have capitalized in SKIS already um, using that information from the amortization table. So for our example, we're just using 26, all zeros. So 
So that is the payment schedule filled out for a new Sabetta. Uh, and like I said, if you had a second one, you would just skip a blank line and then do the same thing. You paste the amortization schedule, you fill out this information, and then on the first row, you would fill out columns ST and U for that other one. You'll then go to the Lease Roll Forward tab, and what you want to do is complete columns A, B, and D for that new Sabetta. So column A is your lease ID, and that needs to exactly tie to what you entered on the payment schedule for lease ID, column D. Uh, copy and pasting is helpful. Uh, if there's any extra spaces or anything like that, it won't work. You need to make sure it exactly ties. Uh, column B is going to be your lease type again. For the Sabita package, it will always be a Sabita. For the uh, Lease reporting package 3.09, you'll need to choose the lease type based on the underlying asset. That should also tie to um, your column F on payment schedule. And then column D you need to complete. That will be the interest rate used on your GASB lease calculator. In our case, it is a 3.5 interest rate. And as you can see, having entered that information, it will populate and pull um, these formulas from your payment schedule tab. You'll see variances right now. Uh, these will continue to go away as we enter in more information. In section one, we added a new Sabetta to the reporting package by filling out the payment schedule and at least roll forward tab. This next section is going to be discussing what you'll be doing during your monthly reconciliations as well as your year-end reconciliations. So, every month you should be receiving an email from the Act for Inbox. If you have notified us that you have Civitas or leases, um, you'll be receiving an email for Civitas as well as an email for leases. The Civita email uh, is called Act for Civita Monthly Reconciliation as the subject line and included in that is two Excel files as well as just some information that we send out um, explaining the process. These two Excel files will be the data you need to complete your monthly reconciliations and then at year end and then mid year uh, you'll also use the same information uh, to complete those packages that you submit to the CG's office. Um, so what you'll do is you'll find the most recent one you received and uh, I have one from um, January I'm going to use right now and you'll see these two Excel files the lease reconciliation report and the lease assets report. One is the actual payment um, payment expenditures that your agency has made year to date. The other one is your asset listing out of SKIS that you'll use. So first we'll open the Sabita Leased Assets, the Asset History Report. This file here, um, as you can see, is the asset listing. So we're going to copy this information. So I'm not grabbing the headings, I only want to grab the information itself. So I'm going from column A all the way over to column V, getting the data, copying it. And we go into our reporting package, the 3.11 package, and I want to go to the BW Asset Listing tab. And as you can see, it says Business Objects, Bob J Report, Sabita Leased Assets, Asset History Report. That's where we're copying and pasting it. So we've copied it, and we're going to paste it down into B20. That is the first section that. Um, is blank with the headings. We're going to copy and paste. And it pastes it down and fills it out and we'll actually populate this formula here notating it as a Sabita. Now next we are going to open the lease reconciliation report. And this report has multiple tabs. Um, different tabs have different, the same information cut different ways to assist in looking at it. Uh, the, the tabs that we actually use in the reporting package are going to be the year-to-date tab and the year-to-date by document number tab. 
So starting with the year to date tab, as you can see, it says use this to update BW expense report GL tab in your 3.11 reporting package. So we're going to copy the information. We are not going to copy the headings, just the data itself. Highlight it all, copy it, go to our reporting package, go to the BW expense report GL tab, go to column A, cell 7, A7, and paste it in. And as you can see, it will copy it down and begin filling out these formulas on the side. I want to go back to my report, the lease reconciliation report with credit on date, and go to the year to date by doc tab. Copy the information. Do not copy the headings, just the information itself. And go back to the reporting package and go to the BW expense report doc tab. And enter that information into cell A7, pasting it down. And as a reminder, if you go in the report and you have a question, you'll see over here it says use this data to update BW expense report doc tab, letting you know which tabs go where. So we've now pasted the most recent information from our automated reports um, into our reporting package. Just as a recommendation, uh, each month as you do this reconciliation and then as you do it for the mid-year reporting package that you submit or the year-end reporting package that you submit, our recommendation is to take the information from these automated reports, um, this information as you're copying and pasting it in. We recommend pasting over the information that you've got currently in your reporting package if you were to update it to paste over what's currently there just so you don't accidentally duplicate these monthly reports are year to date so that they will contain everything um, from the previous uh, emails as well as the newest information so we recommend pasting over it just so that you don't duplicate or miss anything so we've now copied the most recent information from the automated monthly reports into our reporting package um, we've completed the BW Expense Report GL tab, BW Asset Listing tab, and BW Expense Report Doc tab with that information. So we will now begin the reconciliation between the actual payments made in SKIS uh, for leases and the payment schedule, which is the amortization tables that were created when the lease slash submitted was originally created, which is what we planned to pay compared to what was actually paid on the GL. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the payment schedule for our Sabeta and we're going to compare it to the expense report GL tab uh, for the payments actually made. So when we dropped in this information, it filled out column J and column L with uh, the formulas that exist. So column J is looking at the actual GL expenditure used. So we've got principal interest contingent. The principal and interest payments are going to be labeled as lease expense. This is what we're actually reconciling. And um, the other types will be labeled as something different. If you're in the 3.09 package, you'll probably see even more for the short term, low value, other excluded. But what we're going to do is we're going to filter just for the lease expense ones. So now we just see principal and interests. And in this example here, you'll actually see that a payment was created and then reversed um, for one of these payments. So we're actually going to mark that as reversed in our notes column just to assist us so we can ignore that. So I'm going to filter that out and we can ignore that for now, making it easier. So we will then look at our principal and interest payments and you'll see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different documents. And each of those documents pay principal and interest for a total of 18 different payment amounts. And so what we want to do is we can want to compare each of these payments to our payment schedule. So the first payment totals 18, 4, 16, 65. 
on our payment schedule here, paying the same vendor, and our total payment should have been 18 for 16.65. That ties. So I want to look at the principal amount, 17.029. That ties. The interest amount, 13.87. That ties. So I can see that this document here actually paid the on the payment schedule this first payment. So in column Q, I'm going to mark this as X, current year payment posted. And I've compared the two price, two amounts, and they actually tie exactly to what I expected. So I'm going to fill out column R and say yes. The payment was posted correctly using the right GL accounts with the right dollar amount allocation. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this document number, I'm going to copy it from the GL the report GL tab, I'm going to paste it on the payment schedule on this row into column AD. And what this will do is this will take and do a VLOOKUP on the information in the Expense Report GL tab and pull those amounts for principal and interest. And then it'll do a variance based on the amount you have in the amortization table on the payment schedule. And once again, confirm that there is no difference between those amounts, which is great. So that's the first payment. We want to systematically go through each payment listed and notate those as paid on the payment schedule and then copy the doc number. By copying that doc number on the payment schedule, that will actually go through and notate over here that payment is relating to software ID 123 as the first payment for that. So it takes it here and applies this payment ID number, payment number to the report helping us go through these. So next payment is for 17999 On the payment schedule, 17999 93 cents. Interest for that same document number was 1337.56. 1337.56. I'll mark it as yes, it has been paid. X, it has been paid. Yes, it was paid correctly. And take the document number, copy it, go over here to column AD, I'm going to paste it in, and I'll update it, and going back to the expense report, you'll see it now labels it as payment number two for that vendor ID. So I will continue to do that for each of these line items. which I have now done off screen. I've gone through and done uh, a reconciliation between each of those line items on the expense report. They tied to the payment schedule. Seven payments were made. Seven payments were made. All of those payments matched dollar for dollar between principal and interest. I've marked those as X in column Q, yes, correct in column R, and I have pasted in the corresponding document number in column AD. They show zero variance, which is good. Their expense report tab has updated my column M for those payments. You can actually see that each of those documents have a contingent line item too. It updates it there too, but we are focused mostly on the lease expense. So. So now we have reconciled all of our lease expense line items on the BW expense report. On our payment schedule, we have marked all payments made year to date for our Sibeta as yes made um, as X, uh, yes, they have been posted. So we can now go to the expense reconciliation to make sure everything ties. So what we'll see here is column F. This is going to be all the payments that we have um, recorded on the BW Expense Report GL tab. Column G is going to be all the payments on the payment schedule that we have marked an X next to as having been paid year to date. 
and then column H is going to be the variance between the two of them. Uh, a little bit later in this video, we'll discuss uh, if variances do exist, those symptoms, and how they can be fixed, that kind of thing. So that said, what we want uh, as part of the reconciliation is we want column H, the reconciliation between payment schedule and payments posted for the BW expense report tab compared to the payment schedule tab. We want these variances to be zero. Uh, in order for us to accept your file when you submit the mid-year year-end package, uh, this should be zero um, for this section. Um, moving on to the lease roll forward tab, we have some other things we want to check um, for variances. The uh, formulas have now updated to show your roll forward of your lease liability. So the first variance that we're going to check to make sure everything's great is the column AU. The, this column I equal the future payments. And uh, this column should be zero for all your various submittals or leases. Uh, if it is not, that means there's an issue with the roll forward or if there's an issue with the comparison of your um, fixed assets versus the uh, payment schedule. So the asset you actually capitalize versus the payment schedule amount that you have on your amortization table. The other section to look for is your reconciliation section right here. Um, and you'll see there is quite a few different variances um, they're all testing different things, but you want each of these to be zero. Um, and if not, uh, please reach out and we can help you go through that process to figure out why. One thing of note is that this one variance down here, the, um, the expenditure reconciliation, uh, lease of expenditure reconciliation, this variance will only apply for your year end package. Um, it will more than likely show a variance for any other time. Um, what it's checking is to make sure that all of your payments that you say you will have made for a fiscal year have been marked as X on the payment schedule and have been paid. Um, it's comparing the expenditure organization column D to the actual column G, what you actually said you paid um, versus what you were supposed to pay. Uh, outside of your end package, you can ignore that variance. So if all of your variances um, on the lease roll forward tab, as well as the variances on the expenditure reconciliation tab show as zero, then at that point you can, um, for mid-year and year end, you can complete the signature page, fill out the checklist, and submit it to the ACRA team. Um, if you have any variances and you've attempted to clear them, attempted to figure out what they are, um, please reach out and we can assist you with that process. This next section, we're gonna discuss the most common variances that occur in the Sabita and lease reporting packages and um, what symptoms they point to and how your agency can correct those issues uh, so you can submit a fully reconciled reporting package for your mid-year and year-end. So the first thing we're going to look at is your lease roll forward tab. And a common variance that occurs is your agency creates your payment schedule, your amortization table, and then when the asset actually gets capitalized in SPIS, those values might differ slightly. So if they do, more than likely you'll have a variance in a couple different places. The first one you'll see is going to be over here on your lease roll forward tab. If you scroll all the way over to column AU, um, you'll see a difference in your um, column I equal to future payments. So if this is the first year the asset is created, you'll see a variance here where um, your future payment amounts on the payment schedule do not tie to the amount on the lease roll forward. The lease roll forward is using your asset amount from SPIS. Uh, you'll also see variances down here below. You'll see my example has $620 difference and uh, that's occurring in these other variances. Another place you'll see it is on the payment schedule itself. Um, so you get your payment schedule and you scroll over here and in column AA, there's a comparison of the total value on the payment schedule versus the amount of um, asset value in SPIS um, pulling from the BW asset listing tab. So you'll see the variance here. So you see variances um, 
in column AA on the payment schedule as well as elsewhere. What that is pointing to is the asset was capitalized for the incorrect amount or the amortization table does not tie um, one of the other needs to be fixed and corrected. So the total value to sum up all of the principal amount for the payment schedule is 475.622. That is not that we would um, expect to see as capitalized to go to the GW asset listing. What was actually capitalized was 475.002. So $620 difference. So in this situation, um, if the payment schedule is correct, the asset needs to have an additional $620 um, capitalized via the Abzon transaction to correct. And once that is done, um, you can then update the GW asset listing for the new value and it would cause the reconciliation to tie. The other most common variance is going to be on the expenditure reconciliation tab. And so when you are finishing up your payment schedule and GW expense report GL tab reconciliation, uh, you'll then go to the expenditure reconciliation tab and look for any variances between those two amounts. And so at the GW expense report tab, that's column F, that's the total amount that was actually paid on the GL to principal and interest. And then you've got your column Z, which is going to be an amount on the payment schedule that have been marked as X. Any variance between those two is going to show up in column H. So in this example, you can see that there is a $3 difference between principal, um, what was actually paid versus what was expected to be paid. And then on interest, there's a $3.53. So um, what we can do is we can go in and look and see why there is a variance. And we use the payment schedule to assist us. So on the payment schedule, we have marked X and We've gone through, and as we did our reconciliation, we marked yes, whether something was paid exactly correct compared to the expense report or not. And so in our example, we now have a few that did not tie exactly. And I'll show you those. So this second payment over here. We can see the second payment $18,002 paid towards principal. And on the payment schedule itself, there was $17,999 that was supposed to be paid. So that is a $3 difference. And the way we can see that even better is since we filled out our doc numbers in column AD, we've got the variance. And the variance will show us that on this payment itself, this doc number, it's a $3 difference from the payment schedule in principal and a corresponding $3 difference in interest. So it looks like for this payment, what happened is when the payment was made, the allocation was slightly incorrect. The payment was made with $3 more to principal than it should have and $3 less to interest. So in this case, an agency should do a small adjusting entry that would be a credit to principal account for Sabitas and a debit to the interest account for Sabitas uh, for the $3 difference, correcting that. And you can see that looking at payment number seven, there is also a slight variance. And that's where our 53 cents dollar, 53 cent difference comes from. So in this situation, it looks like on the payment schedule, the amount we expected was 1,073 and 53 cents. The amount that was actually paid was just 1,073. The cents were not were not paid. There's a slight difference. And so here in this situation, um, we're going to go with what was actually paid because um, I we would assume that the vendor got paid what they were expected to be paid. In this situation, the vendor might have rounded their invoice um, for the 53 cents. Um, they might have reduced it. And so in situations like these where the invoice does not exactly match what was expected in the payment schedule, but it is a, um, a very small variance, like the 53 cents, less than a dollar, less than five dollars, that kind of thing, uh, we ask the agencies push the variance, the difference, into the interest and make sure that the principal amount actually ties to what was expected to be paid on the payment schedule. So in this situation, 
the payment, the principal amount was paid correctly. It was the right allocation. And the difference between the invoice and the actual payment schedule is 53 cents, and that was netted against the interest amount. So that would be correct. And that variance in this situation would be okay. You can plug it to the interest account. So once an HC goes in and makes the correct new journal entry for the $3, they would drop in a new DW expense report DL report from the monthly report. And in this situation, an agency can reach out to the ACRA team and request an updated report, the monthly automated reports. We can run those for you whenever. If you were to do a journal entry, let us know. In the next day, we can run it, and it will have updated information for your mid-year or year-end reporting package. Um, so once the updated report is done, it would show an additional $3 principal, $3 interest, which I have just added. Um, just as an example to show how that would affect it. So this $3 adjustment, $3 adjustment. And if you come back to the expense reconciliation, you see that the principal variance is now fixed. The interest variance is now just the 53 cents that is acceptable due to a difference between the actual invoice and the payment schedule. And in this case, this variance would be de minimis and we would accept the 15 cents adjustment. And for the asset, once the agency completes the Abzon adding a $620 adjustment, you'll see that it will show up on the DW asset listing with the new report that's going to be dropped in. And the control forward will show no variances. Should you have any questions about the reconciliation process, uh, whether that be fixing any variances that exist, or um, determining next steps for your agency, please feel free to reach out to the ACRA team. We will uh, do our best to uh, help you out. And uh, as a reminder, these uh, pointers do apply to both the submitted package as well as the lease reporting package. They are um, functionally identical, uh, just handling the different asset types. Thank you very much.